All right, everyone, welcome to Simply Bitcoin. We break down the news from Twitter, the daily fail, meme review, the software releases, the websites by plebs or plebs. Today, joining us, very special guests. We've got Heavily Armed Clown and Mr. Cool BP Ben Prentice from What the Fuck Happened in 1971.com. Before we get them in on the action, though, you know where this goes. We're going to the numbers. Let's do it. Mama time. At the time of this recording, the block height is 689,254. Sorry, there's a huge storm going on right now, so I apologize for any crazy sounds that are coming in because it sounds like the whole house is shaking. Is it a coincidence that there was thunder when you read the blocks? No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At the time of this recording, the block height is 689,254. The Bitcoin price, 34,790. The chain rewrite days, 998. Total public lightning capacity, 1,643.37. Bitcoin versus gold market cap, 5.63%. Sats per dollar, 2,874. So that lightning capacity, the public, uh, the public node lightning capacity just keeps increasing. Yesterday, we were at 641. So, bullish, bullish, bro. Remember you know, when we were stuck there for at a thousand? Yep. <laughs> for like literally, bro, it felt like months. We were just stuck there, like 998 to a thousand. And now it's just, eh, it's gotten a little exponential. And I suspect it's just going to keep rising. So, good stuff. Overall, good numbers. It's a definitely a good time to stack Bitcoin at a discount. It's always mm -hmm. at a discount. Uh, but, anyways, Phil, it's time for the daily fail. All right. So obviously Alex Gladstein, not our fail, um, but this is an interesting post, right? Sam Altman raised 25 million for world coin in brackets, giant shit coin, a UBI token that relies on a retina ID scanning basketball sized orb. That sounds like everybody wants to carry one of those, right? Madness. So much wasted that could be helping to liberate and empower people via Bitcoin education, UX initiatives. Future regret will be big. So what's he talking about? He's talking about this article. Let's go take a look at this thing. This is this is pretty cringe. This is the type of crap that like I read about as a kid and, and I thought no one's dumb enough to do this. His startup, uh, WorldCoin, is developing an orb-shaped device that can read a person's iris. That's really what I'm looking for. All right, so even before we get into the device itself, I've been very interested in things like universal basic income and what's going to happen to global wealth distribution and how we can do that better, Altman said. Is there a way we can use technology to do that at a global scale? I don't I don't see how a centralized corporation that raises money to create a currency somehow uh, creates UBI and redistributes wealth. And this is a freaking scam. Anyways, I'm sorry, I'm not biased. Um, so many people around the world don't have access to financial systems. This is true. Crypto has the opportunity to get us there. This is misleading. OK, because Bitcoin is really what's what's leading us there. This this whole garbage narrative with crypto. It, it's just totally, totally fucked. All right. So here we go. A new global digital currency that will launch by giving a share to every single person on Earth. What? OK, this is where we talk about the device. The device is a silver colored spherical gizmo, the size of a basketball that can be carried around and used. This is the, this is the best part and used to scan people's irises in order to ascertain their unique identities. Your identity in no way, shape or form needs to be money. This is completely psychotic. OK, this is what the dystopian future looks like. OK, th th this is total like this is like herding of humans. It's it's. It's bad enough that, that we had that we do it anyways, you know, with, with with animals and all that. Like now we're just doing it to each other, you know, at a massive global scale. And not only that, but controlling every aspect of our lives like that is some scary shit right there. I want no part of WorldCoin. <laughs> yeah, man, look, uh, 
the, I, I'm going to stick by what I said in my tweet a couple days ago because I feel like it applies perfectly. Uh, shit coiners give off, give me like commie vibes, you know, and apparently a lot of you guys agreed. Um, and when I hear words like wealth distribution and all that stuff, I'm like, oh, man, here we go again. Um, and yeah, dude, but <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I want to know the people that gave this guy $25 million because <laughs> I have a bridge in Brooklyn oh. that I want to sell them because, dude, like, how the hell did he? I, I don't know how people thought this was a good idea. How about yeah. Andreessen Horowitz? I don't right? know. Man. There you go. No, there's trust me. It, it is some scary stuff. Who is backing this company? Be afraid. This is I, garbage. And I it's scary. Afraid. And it's I am afraid. That's why From I'm like. That's why if I'm not yeah, Bitcoin. Yeah, heavily armed clown, man. You you look like you want to talk Go at it. Go at it, bro. If Go I'm not it. mistaken, Sam Altman is like a Y Combinator guy. So he's probably got a lot of connections That's in the right. world of um, easy money spigot world. So like really anybody with an idea in the Y Combinator space can come in and say, this is great. Give me $25 million. Yeah, there's so much wrong here. But I, the, the thing that really jumps out right off the top of your head is biometrics. Uh, should only be used as usernames, not passwords, my friends. That's yeah, right. I mean, what could go wrong? You know, just one giant database with everyone's personal information. You know, it's it's not like they they've ever been hacked before. But it just scares me. It scares me to think that people actually are. You know, will sit there and be like, "Let's put together a company, right?" And then we'll create this garbage token and we'll r distribute it to everyone and somehow this is going to fix the world's monetary problem by throwing in um KYC. your your unique id yeah <laughs> I exactly right like I, I don't see how that fixes anything like that's not the problem it's worse than kyc that wasn't the problem <laughs> it's <laughs> biometric kyc bro i think the premises fail or flawed too because you know you can print as much currency as you want and arbitrarily distribute it but that's not gonna fix wealth inequality because wealth inequality happens in assets it doesn't usually happen in currencies socialists don't believe that socialists right, of course believe that you could yeah. just print as much There's and that's no such thing as well. asset inflation right <laughs> <laughs> that's right inflation what is this you know it's only doesn't exist <laughs> there's a book on it that says it doesn't work so it's it, okay yeah, if anything, another expansionary monetary policy experiment is just going to make people more poor and make the rich people more rich. Yep. Always. Right. Ben, any closing thoughts? I mean, it's a shit coin. They're going to print it and give it out to people. Um, this is this is not something that I'm worried about for Bitcoin. It's just, oh. you know, have fun holding that token, right? Have fun. <laughs> yeah. What was the name of that guy, Phil? I forget. Sam Altman? Sam Altman. Have fun staying poor. But anyways, Phil, it's time for it. The Daily Meme Review. All right, everybody. The meme for today is brought to us by a fellow plebe at Bitcoinator. He taught us how to pronounce his name because in the beginning I was like Bitcoin underscore Aider. But no, it's like Bitcoinator, like Terminator. Anyways, okay. Let's check out the meme. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in bed and you, ha you will have fun staying poor. You take the orange pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I will show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember... All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Make your choice. Uh, super epic, man. Uh, you know, number go up and uh, have fun staying poor, which is the blue pill. So, yeah, man, uh, awesome, awesome meme. And I definitely wanted to review it today with these legends. And uh, for that meme, I'm going to give it, Phil, you're not going to beat me today, a basketball. Woo! Okay. Nice. Basketball, huh? Okay. All right. You know what? That meme is very inspiring. I love it. I love all the Matrix memes. And and for that, maybe maybe I don't beat you, but I'm going with a Dietz Lantern. Oh! Right? Because symbolically, the light shining in the darkness, right? So good symbolism. God damn it. They'll beat me today. Okay. Anyways, Collins, what would you give that meme? Uh, I'll give that one a uh, cat walking by the door twice. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have fun finding that. That's, That's a good a reference. One. It's they, yes. they show it in the Matrix. It's awesome. Yes. The FX yes. guy will put that in. Don't worry. Yep. Uh, you're you're looking yeah, at I'll it right now. In. Hell yeah, I'm going to put that in. All right, Ben. What will you give that meme? I'm giving this two really, really small uh, A32 batteries and a guitar. Oh, 
Interesting. Wait a second. Have we ever had a combination? I mean, we've done the combination with the with the fake fruit. I don't know if that really counts. This is like totally different, right? Bro, no one has ever given an instrument and a battery That's at right. the same time. Ben just changed that just the game. steps it up. But at I the same but at the same time, Colin is pointing out the glitch in the matrix. So mm. this is gonna be a serious, inspiring meme review for everyone. Exactly. <laughs> is guys. Bitcoin a glitch in the matrix? Ah, is it? Is it? Ah. Anyways, guys, do you agree with our memes? Do you disagree? Let us down, let us know down in the comments. Rate the meme. But anyways, Phil, it's time for it. The Daily News, sponsored by Crypto Cloaks. The strength of a nation's currency is based on the strength of that nation's economy. And the American economy is by far the strongest in the world. Accordingly, I have directed the Secretary of the Treasury to take the action necessary to defend the dollar against the speculators. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. Now, what does this action, which is very technical, what does it mean for you? Let me lay to, re lay to rest the bugaboo. Let's, let's address the bugaroo, okay? The bugaboo. Uh, the bugaroo, okay? So uh, this bugaboo. Is this Bugaboo. Is, this, this was the date of his announcement, okay? This is productivity, but the compensation has remained flat. All right, let's move on. Okay, 1971. I don't know what's wrong with this date. It's, it's almost as if when they took us off sound money, something happened. Anyways, let's move on. Um, real medium weekly earnings of full-time workers. Real GDP per capita, right? Uh, income gains widely share in early post-war decades. And it just keeps going. Anyways, obviously, something happened in 1971. Ben, what the fuck happened in 1971? And why should anyone, when, why should we care? Um, uh, well, hippies, they happened in 1971. That's probably what caused all this, uh, all this, these problems, right? Uh, no, I mean, the go we, we took the dollar off the gold standard, which means they can now print infinite money and they have no accountability. And uh, it has led to gross expansion of the money supply and wealth inequality. Um, it's led to gross malinvestment, uh, all sorts of other things. And there's all these other second order effects that, that Colin and I are often talking about. And uh, it's just generally not good. And pretty much everybody agrees after looking at the data that directionally we've gone the wrong way. Why is it that mainstream economists back to you ben why is it that mainstream economists and mainstream media and no one talks about this it's like it doesn't exist um it's a good question i mean we kind of just stumbled upon this stuff just doing research about monetary history and finding the data but um you know mainstream economists uh their their whole gig is that they get to manipulate the money supply right so like if if they came out and said hey guys we should stop printing money, then they kind of just be out of a job, right? So it's like one of those, you know, getting somebody to understand something that their salary depends on. Um, like they're, literally the answer is to stop printing money, right? And and these guys, that's that's what like economists do is, is tell you how much money to print and what interest rate to be at. And um, yeah, Austrian economists, not a lot of jobs for them at the Fed, you know? <laughs> nope. Uh, yeah, so uh, Colin, actually, let me ask you about the, uh, the, the website. Um, Essentially, like what what got you guys to, you know, to to do, you know, what the fuck happened in 1971 and how has been the, you know, the reception? I actually I use it and I recommend it. So, well, the short answer is that Ben and I are giant nerds. Uh, the long answer is that we're giant nerds, particularly interested in history of money um, and looking at data and charts. But I mean, you know, in seriousness, though, like it took a lot of work. Well, we, we didn't do all the work because the website has actually been uh, very well received. In fact, in 2020 alone, the website had almost a million views uh, and it's literally just pictures of charts. Uh, so it's pretty amazing. People send us charts that they find occasionally in their own research of history and, and through data. Um, so, but a lot of these Ben and I found, you know, some of them we found just kind of looking around on the internet. Some of them we found digging into research papers. Um, really, it's, you gotta really love this stuff to, to find charts that fit. Well, you know what? I love that you guys love this stuff. 
okay, this much, because it makes it a lot easier for some of us that, you know, we, we like it a lot, but we just, we don't have that, that, that passion to dig that deep. So really we appreciate it. Okay. This might be a tough one. Okay. If, if somebody were to have like one, can you recommend one book, one particular, is there any book that you can recommend for somebody that, you know, like that, that maybe wants to dive in deeper, maybe get like a, a big picture view because there, there's so much out there, right? There, there's so many different books. Like I'm thinking of, you know, Creature from Jekyll Island. I'm thinking of, um, oh gosh, there, there's, uh, I, I can't, you know what? That's just the main one that I'm thinking of, but I know there's a, a, at least two or three others. Any Mine thoughts? would be Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt, because that'll teach you to think from first, it's a very short book and it's pretty easy to read. And that'll teach you to think from first principles. And if you can build that base, then from there, uh, a lot of other things are going to start to make a lot more sense. I like that economics in one lesson. All right, cool, man. Awesome. Thank you. Well, you guys heard it here first, right? What the guys from what the F happened 1971 recommend to read. But anyways, I want to get your thoughts on this as well, guys. This also happened in the 1970. And I think I think this was the biggest bait and switch that has ever been implemented. And of course, I'm talking about the Bank Secrecy Act. Now, we all know what the Bank Secrecy Act, this was the start of 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 aml this is the start of kyc but when the act passed in 1970 right and this is the whole scam right it it, it required reports of a daily aggregate that exceeded ten thousand dollars now i want you guys to remember this number because in 1970 right ten thousand dollars was 70 grand right so that's a big difference right so again, this is very, you know, this is how the government passes things, right? They pass this, you know, and, and of course, people at the time thought, what's the big deal? You know, like $70,000. Now with inflation, that $10,000 number starts to become, you know, uh, what's the proper word for this? You know, um, hmm. it becomes a tool of surveillance now more so of stopping actual crime. That that's my opinion, right? Um you kind of saw this uh and and you kind of see this man. You you see this with with Brad Sherman's comments today at the crypto committee, you know, some fiat council government committee whatever, and he's saying one of the biggest one of the main advantages that Bitcoin has over uh over the US dollar is that it doesn't have KYC. It is that it doesn't have AML. Evading uh, the know your customer rule is the one thing that cryptocurrencies have as an advantage to the US dollar. So my point being is when they passed this law, they passed this law under the guise that it was 70 grand worth of value. But today the law remains the same, but it's $10,000 worth of value. What happens in 20 years when $10,000 is really worth a thousand? You get what I'm trying to say? So. Scary stuff. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one that feels that way. Phil, what are your thoughts? Yeah, that's, I mean, look, let's be honest, right? It's, I, I don't believe it has anything to do with actual crime. I, I quite often, th their measures really have to do, in my eyes anyways, much more to do with uh, population control and, um, you know, exercising that power. So for, for me, I, you know, I, I just think that everything when it comes to that is arbitrary. Um, but you know what, uh, really what I was, um, what I was thinking about was, was that what is it as a, an individual, right? Like what incentive do we have to do this to our fellow man? Like, I, I don't understand, like, I, I get it that, you know, a small group of people want, want a certain amount of power, but why would everyone else go along with it? Right. If, if it's actually devaluing themselves as well. Like, I, I get that they're the closest to the money spigot and all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, they're still impoverishing themselves. It's really psychotic, kind of hypocritical. It is. So, um, Colin, do you think it's a coincidence that this law, the Bank Secrecy uh, Act, passed right before 1971, right before Nixon took us off the gold standard? Is that a coincidence? No, I don't think it's. I mean, 
you know, I don't know. I don't want to get too conspiratorial on you guys, but I, I don't think it's I don't think it's a total coincidence. No, I think that the things are probably somewhat related. And the, the other thing that this law does too is make it extremely expensive for uh, financial institutions and banks to offer you services that allow you to use um, money. Because as that number becomes relatively smaller and smaller in its true value, more and more reporting requirements and bureaucrats and lawyers and audits and paperwork are required on behalf of any institution that wants to interact with money. So it makes yeah. things you want to, services you want to use more expensive as well. And it also puts you on a list, right? It puts you on a government list just because you want to spend your money, right? All under the guise of safety, right? So, so Ben, um, again, I'm going to ask you the same question. Do you think it was a coincidence that this law passed right before 1971? No, I don't think it's a coincidence at all, but, um, you know, I'll take a slightly less tinfoil hat approach to this is like, you know, cause Phil asked, you know, like, why do you think they feel the need to do this stuff? And I, I mean, it was kind of rhetorical, but I'm going to answer it anyway. Um, I think that basically the, 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 the control of money has been, uh, the purview of governments for a long time because the monetary technologies that we've used for a long time fell short really of what humans desired for trade. And because, uh, we have a better money now that doesn't need central control. Eventually, these people, are, I mean, they're going to run around, they're going to try to, you know, control these little edges and all these things, but they can't control Bitcoin at all. And um, I guess what I'm trying to say is like a lot of this stuff is born out of the fact that they think they need to control everything. And I think Bitcoin fixes a lot of this stuff. So I don't, maybe I'm taking your question in a slightly different direction, but I, it doesn't worry me as much, you know? Yeah, no, I so I, I absolutely agree with you because what tends to happen if a government overregulates Bitcoin, right? I always say to Phil, governments are stuck between a rock and a hard place because if they overregulate, it just forces us Bitcoiners just to stay in Bitcoin. Um, but if they underregulate, even if that's even a thing. Um, so like what are they, what are governments supposed to do? The only weak part that they can attack are the on and off ramps, right? So I think that this is where, and Phil and I have been covering this for months now, right? With the Financial Action Task Force, you know, they're recommending that even lower transactions of $3,000, uh, they want crypto or Bitcoin exchanges to report that, right? So, you know, again, right? This is like the old world legacy system trying to implement their systems of control on top of Bitcoin. It's going to be an epic fail. But what what I'm a little worried of, guys, and maybe one of you guys could jump in here, is the casualties in the process but by the amount of fear that governments are going to be selling, right? Because you know that once Bitcoin, as Bitcoin continues to climb up in market cap and it actually starts to become a threat to central banking, the narratives are just going to get stronger and stronger and stronger just like Richard Nixon said in 1971, he went on TV and he said, listen, people are attacking the dollar. I would not be surprised at all if they use that same rhetoric. You know what, though? Interestingly enough, I'd say they are the perpetrators of attacking the dollar. <laughs> like they're claiming that, you know, the dollar's being attacked, but really by doing what they did with it, right, by lifting it off of the gold standard, by printing the infinite money, you know, by creating this scenario of that we have of cycles of booms and busts, right, that, that are baked into this system, they are attacking the dollar. Yeah. That, that's that, that's my take anyways. Phil, you nailed it. I, I'd say there's two things. One, um, the fact that <laughs> you think they're going to have strong narratives. Um, they haven't met the meme lords yet. Uh, and, 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 and the plebs, the taco plebs and the cyber hornets, like those are strong narratives. Memes control the world. And to that kind of more point, um, the the way that they used to control the narrative is through the mainstream media. And the only generation that's watching that shit is dying off. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Um, nobody nobody gets their information from the news anymore. Not anybody we know. So uh, again, not really worried about in the long term, but you know, I, along the way, casualties for sure, Nico. I, I, I completely agree. Um, I think that that's why it's so important. And that's, and, and I'm gonna go back to what we've been saying. That's why toxicity is so important, right? You need, you know, you need the plebs on Twitter constantly calling out you know I, I find it hilarious lately it's the european central bank they go up there it's like you could trust us 100 percent. the euro is accepted by 80 percent. usually when people have to tell you how awesome their currency is it's usually dog shit right but uh but colin uh any closing thoughts sure i can break it down very simply uh the government fud is gonna have to be better than number go up and 
the government FUD can't be better than number go up because printer go burr. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. <laughs> I think that was so well said. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> I rest my case, Your Honor. See, <laughs> I wish I had a, a like a gavel. Yeah, we need a gavel. All right, that's the daily awesome. news. But Phil, there was a, a software release today. Why don't you tell everybody about it? Software releases. All right. So we've got. Wait, what did you write? I have no idea what this is. <laughs> You got to tell me in advance. I don't know what this is. Okay. Anyways. No. So this is the, uh, the I, I'm, I believe this is the rust, uh, the rust implementation of lightning. Uh, it's version 0.0.98 that's released and that's down below in the show notes. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. I totally wrote that on purpose. Just okay. Can't <laughs> <remember> <laughs> to read that because I honestly had no idea what it is, but uh, I know a lot of you guys ask us to give you a context of what the software releases is. So we're trying to do that. Yeah. But anyways, guys, that was our show. But before we go, I want to give a shout out to our two awesome guests. You guys definitely have to give them a follow. You can follow, you could follow Colin at Heavily Armed Crown or Heavily wow. at Heavily Armed <laughs> C. That's his handle. And his name on Twitter is Heavily Armed Clown. Definitely go give him a follow. Definitely go check out his podcast as well. It's called The Bitcoin Echo Chamber. Super cool. And of course, last but not least, the the man, the myth, the legend, Ben uh, Bren Prentice. Nico can't read, uh, like always. And you can go follow him at Mr. Cool BP. That's an awesome handle. How the F did you get that? And of course, definitely go check out this guy, these guys' legendary website, because it is legendary. Everyone knows about it. Definitely go check it out. What the F happened in 1971. Guys, that was our episode for today. If you enjoyed the show, you know what to do. Smash that like button. It's slower because it's Wednesday. And of course, if you want to continue hearing the Bitcoin news from the plip plip perspective and the catastrophic fiat and shitcoin fails, definitely consider subscribing. And we will see you tomorrow for another episode of Simply Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs>